Good news everyone, we got once again an update from our overlords to the June or in June and where we got feather filters and war. So filters are more the bling bling part here. The feather thing is kind of interesting. So this is great for us developers um, which use a lot of coding and stuff. So here very, very useful thing. And of course for everybody else uh, also. So this is on the outside just a tooltip. But let's go for the first part, which is the exciting new filters. I would say press X to doubt about exciting because let's say two of them are pretty useful and the other ones are, I don't know if they will be used a lot of all. And then we got some extension options and SDK updates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So on the outside, it looks like a lighter update, but that thing is a beast. And I'm gonna show you why in a few seconds. But let's go into the bling bling part because why not? So we got, first of all, our newest filters, which are boxes. And this is one of those obscure filters of uh, which the input, I don't know. So here you can animate them and you can play around with numbers and then you can blink and uh, <laughs> I don't know what it, it's good for. It's kind of interesting, uh, kind of a cheap way to make um, some backgrounds or whatever. Just once again, one of those obscure uh, things which are kind of neat so why not but I'm not gonna sure I'm not sure if we can use it for anything and then we got not color tint but color balance this is giving you tons of options so mid tones and high tones and so on um, to uh, change the colors on the fly before you just had the color tint with or colorize so here definitely uh, less potent and less fine tuning. This is just basically the same thing, but with more options concerning the colors, and then you can actually do a little bit more. So this is pretty cool for more fine tuning. So this is actually a pretty sweet filter. And then the next one, we got RGB noise. This is kind of like a grain filter and you can even animate it. So if you wanna have some static or whatever, boom, you can do that. So depending what kind of opacity and how fast you wanna animate it. Why not a one of the more useful filters in my opinion. And then we got a vignette. This is a pretty good one. So this one I definitely like. So before that, if you wanted to, to do a vignette, you did it with a, your own shader or you did it cheaply with a sprite like I do. But here now we got a vignette and then we can actually uh, create one here around the view. So for example, once we start that, you see that this neat little filter did a, a pretty smooth vignette on the view of, of the camera. So basically this is a pretty sweet addition. And then the last thing, I guess this is the last one. Yeah, this is the last one we got the zoom blur. So this is an action scene. Not sure what the practicality of that is in most games that you will definitely not see. Of course, you can um, have a focus radius, which is then on the part, which it is not supposed to be focusing. And then for example, once we start that thing, it looks like this. So interesting effect. So everything is getting defocused and like kind of this action -y thing. Maybe for racing games, this could be more interesting but for now i don't see any practical application but once again pretty cool stuff and of course an effect like this yeah this is looking kind of cool so um an interesting feature Alrighty, so let's go to the, the more important part which is on the looking on the outside just like a tooltip but it's definitely more so feather uh, smart code it can do quite a lot of things and for example, what are the most useful ones? So let's say you need some information, I don't know, about your sprite and then oh, you hover over and then it gives you how it looks like, uh, resolutions, then even for example, the original point. This is great for checking out the stuff. Or for example, if you see a code or a, a, a script, so for example, draw sprite tiled or whatever, what does it do? Then it gives you a quick explanation and then what the parameters which are in there uh, actually mean so very very useful stuff and of course you can do a little bit more if you like so for example if you see uh, now let's do that away because I did it once again for example if you see uh, view set and then this is an internal thing then you can press F F3 on that and then it will show you where it actually is being used so this is pretty cool or for example if you that would be just, um, well, 
for the object camera but let's say you want to see like hmm, where is it else you so we just press what is it shift and f3 and then you will see a list where that thing is being used in uh, as a list and then you can actually check it out hey where is it so once again pretty neat functionality to search for stuff inside well this thing and of course if you check it out and then you're like you just hover over and it doesn't show you like one up in the have you been lying to me not really because um, they kind of uh, deactivated it on default you just go on the preferences and then feather settings and then you need to enable and then you just press apply and boom it should work out of the box I'm not sure why they deactivated i guess it's still kind of in a beta phase or uh, how can you call it status or whatever state and then well you just enable it for me it worked pretty fine so i'm having no pr problems with that already that was it from my side hopefully you enjoyed this not sure um before i end this video if there are any performance issues on the last one there were some concerning um what was it scripts they didn't work out and for me i don't know in user events uh, some stuff isn't working uh, not the biggest fan of that but oh well this is the way it goes alrighty that was it from my side see you the next time bye bye